Good morning, Revolution, and welcome to our show this morning. Hope everybody's doing good. And uh, though I'm sure everyone is concerned about the outbreak of war uh, in the Ukraine, Russia invaded the other day. And that is one of the big topics for our discussion this morning. We're gonna be talking uh, about that, plus uh, some developments here in the United States. I see that the three cops in Minneapolis were convicted of violating the civil rights of uh, George Floyd. Uh, and then we have some questions and answers, or hopefully some answers to some questions from uh, people who have visited the party's website or watched the show, and they have inquiring minds and they wanna know. And so we're gonna see if we can give them some answers. And so good morning, Rosanna and Michael, and Anita. Good morning. Good morning, Revolution. Good revolution. All right, y'all. So war. War in the East, war in the West. Uh, there's uh, war in uh, Russia. I'm sorry, in the Ukraine. Russia has invaded. Who's right? Who's wrong? And what should we do about it? Uh, Michael, who are you supporting? The Russians or the Ukrainians or who? I'm going to take the safe answer and the answer that I truly believe in my heart and say that I am supporting the international working class who does not want a war. It's not convenient for them to have a war, whether it be a cold war or a hot war. And so, you know, I think the people who are losing on this, uh, you know, really are the people not only in Ukraine, but also in Russia. You know, 2000 people, I think, got arrested yesterday in Russia for turning out against the war uh, for protesting. But, 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 but what about the two uh, Russian speaking autonomous regions in the Ukraine? I understand that the, uh, there's a right of self-determination there and the Russian party put forward a resolution calling for their independence. And I understand Cuba supported it and Venezuela. So what's yeah, up well, with that? And that's okay. That's okay. You know, we're, we're for self-determination, but that doesn't give, you know, NATO the right to, to send weapons and to back a, a war effort against Russia. It's almost as if I saw a, a cute image on the internet where it was a Tom and Jerry cartoon and it was uh, Jerry the mouse spanks a uh, big bulldog, you know, with a plank. And then the bulldog wakes up and he throws the plank over to, to, to Tom, to the cat. And, you know, and it's, and it was saying, you know, that the cat is, uh, uh, Ukraine and the mouse Jerry is uh, the, uh, NATO, you know, and so NATO kind of you know, threw Ukraine under the bus with this um, by, you know, encouraging them to join uh, NATO and trying to get them closer to the EU and so forth. And we have to remember Russia tried to, to join NATO. They tried to join the cool kids club, you know, a couple decades ago and, you know, the United States laughed at that. And so these, you know, there's also the economic implications, the oil, the uh, natural gas, you know, even France and Germany are very hesitant to come out um, in favor of, you know, what NATO is doing and, and their strong support of Ukraine. And so well, it, was, I it was a whole big mess back then. But right now, the big question is, Rosanna, who are you supporting? Is it Russia or is it the Ukraine or is it is it Biden or is it somebody else? I'm supporting anyone who's calling for peace. I, <laughs> okay. I just, I just think you know, war is never the answer. We've seen it over and over and over again. It's just not the answer. It doesn't solve anything. You know, it, it gets so many is, in, innocent lives are lost. Innocent lives are lost, and we have to always be mindful of those things. Not, you know, I, I think it's just a, it's, it's not a good war you know, for, for the working people at all. It seems to me like it's just about egos. That's egos and Benjamins. Yeah. <laughs> well, both of those. All right, Anita, Michael supports the international working class. Rosanna su is supporting anybody who stands for peace. That means some middle strata and, and some others as well. And you, <laughs> who are you supporting? I, I, I was convinced by Michael at first, but now I'll go along with Rosanna too. I, I mean, I think we should, so no war, no war in Ukraine. Uh, that, and and I, I agree also with our article today, the article in PW from CJ, no, but there's no good guys among these. You know, Ukraine is at fault, Russia is at fault, NATO is at fault, the US is at fault. 
for continuing to, you know, the, this policy of trying to surround uh, Russia with uh, with our military dominance. It's like, you know, suppose Russia had a had a military, uh, you know, alliance with Mexico. You know, I, I mean, I, we wouldn't have stood for that kind of thing. So, um, so I really think there's there's blame to go around to everybody. I don't know if I agree with that. Now, the the, the people in Russia, I saw the demonstrators for peace in Russia. There was they say the, some of them got arrested. I'm sure the people who stand for peace in the Ukraine, uh, the communists and socialists and some Democrats and uh, I guess people of all different stripes of, of those are good good guys and and women <laughs> and different okay. gender okay. people as well. So I, I think that there are people who who stand for peace. I put we 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 put out a meme this morning. It says, "No war with Ukraine, no war with Russia." No goddamn war, period. So that's what, probably shouldn't say a goddamn because it might offend some people. Uh, we don't mean any anything. We just wanted to put an exclamation point behind the no war concept. Now, I hear that Mr. Putin, for all of you people who think he's the next best thing to slice bread, he said that the, Anita, that the problem was Lenin. He said Lenin. Lenin is the problem. <laughs> Lenin granted sorry, determination, the Bolsheviks to the Ukraine, and and it's really Russian, and therefore, you know, we should just blame it all on the Bolsheviks. What do you think about that? I I, I think that's ridiculous, and um and I've heard a lot of uh this likening that maybe uh, Putin wants to resurrect the Soviet Union, but. You know, um, that article, for example, in the uh, PW today sort of said, you know, Russia's really looking to maybe reestablish the czarist uh, uh, regime more than the Soviet Union. There's nothing socialist about it, nothing empowering the working class about it. And the idea of demilitari demilitarizing an area by bombing it is just, you know, it's just patently ridiculous. So I hope they're not trying to re restart Tsarist Russia. They called that the prison house of nations. Mm -hmm. There were 113 different nations, all under the boot of the Tsar and the Russian nobility and capitalists and bankers and everybody else. And that national question is so sharp, it's burning hot, you know. And, and when the Soviet Union collapsed because they didn't successfully addressed the national, I'll take issue with Mr. Putin. They didn't successfully address it. They tried, but they made a lot of mistakes in the process as well. And then it, it just exploded, all this nationalism and anti-Semitism and racism and God knows what. And uh, now it's, 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 uh, it's uh, burning, burning hot, Michael. Oh, no, it's true. Huh? I said it's true. It's burning hot, and we because we were warning people a couple months ago about we didn't want a Cold War 2.0 with we don't we didn't want it with Russia, we didn't want it with China, and it seems now it's turned hot. And I, I agree with Anita. You know, there's the powers at play are at fault. You know, not the people. I agree that there are good people who want peace. They didn't want this war. I was watching um, French state media this morning, and they were interviewing people in Ukraine and in those the, the separatist republics, and they're saying, you know, to us we just want to live peacefully. And these are just ordinary citizens. We don't care under which flag or whatever. We just want to, we don't want a war. We don't want our houses to get bombed and stuff. So that's something that really resonated with me. And I agree, we have to fight against these um, misconceptions, you know, these claims that uh, Putin's rebuilding the Soviet Union. You know, that I see claims all the time saying Putin's a communist this, he's a communist that. And, um, and then I also see some people even on the left who um, kind of defend, like Joe says, they think he's the best thing. Uh, since uh, sliced bread. And we have to remember this right now, these are capitalist powers fighting each other. You know, so where does that put the working people in the middle of all this? Well, they are capitalist powers fighting each, each other. And by the way, I don't I said last week and the week, I don't agree with calling them oligarchs. Uh, you know, you don't call David Rockefeller and um, JP Morgan, they called them robber barons. You remember that? But they don't call the, the present capitalist, big capitalist, Elon Musk, and what's the head of uh, uh, Bezos. Bezos and all the rest of them. 
They don't call them oligarchs, but they Let's are. Let's start that. Let's you start know? doing that. <laughs> if it's Russians, they call them oligarchs. If it's people in the Middle East or Africa, they call them warlords. If it's in Latin America, they call them drug keeping kingpins. I mean, it's just so bad. So okay. What's the solution, Rosanna? I mean, what what does the what? How do you solve this crisis? Any any ideas? If you were the president, you're my president. But if you were the president of the United States, what would you, what would you, what would you do? Well, I would push for diplomacy, but you know, there's a, just a lot of pushback. Also, I don't think it's going to be. You know, I can't just say, hey, you know, I'm the president, so you guys all got to do what I got to, what I say. There's a whole, you know, interwoven. Uh, was it they say too many too many too many in the soup or was it too many chefs in the kitchen or something like that? Mm. just a lot mm -hmm. so i don't think it's the cut and dry solution but i think as people as working people we need to hit the streets right now is the time to call for peace you know demand biden uh stop this war threat also i mean you know his his whole rhetoric was just egging egging and egging uh, and the media, the, you know, the, the mainstream media, the same thing. Oh, they're doing this and they're doing that. And, and it's just, you know, just, it's almost like they're trying to uh, uh, convince the American people that war is justified, you know, that we should be for war, but we should turn around and tell them we're not for war by uh, going out in the streets and demanding that, you know, Biden call for a peaceful solution and stop, you know, any kind of uh, threat of, of war and demand that, you know, so Putin stop the bombings. Anita, you're Secretary of State. Secretary of State, Anita Waters. Oh, am I? Oh, <laughs> I thought Secretary of the State of Ohio, maybe. Um, what would you do? Well, I would, I would take steps to step back from NATO and start its dismantling process. You know, really, what are we spending all this money for? The, the, um, you know, the military, uh, the weapons manufacturers are really uh, capitalizing on this. Uh, so I would, I would step back from that and, and focus on that as the real cause of what's going on, the militarization of, of our, uh, you know, just look at how many uh, bases the U.S. has available to it around the world. It really is, you know, just the bully, you know, a, a, the bully of the world in, uh, you know, in material form, those bases. So you agree with Trump, get rid of NATO. Is that what you're trying to say? Um, I'm, I'm not saying, maybe, maybe that's the only thing I ever agreed with Donald Trump on, but um, yes. That's why I'll Putin say that. and them like Trump, because they, they don't like NATO and they're trying to do everything they can. They're very nationalistic, you know? They want to play the center against the, against the ends. So anything that will disrupt NATO, which is right on there. Do you know NATO started off with like 12 countries? And now it's like 34. And all of them are surrounding <laughs> Russia. All, I mean, <laughs> and they promised to give up. Uh, Ukraine promised to give up their nuclear weapons. And Russia agreed, provided that they don't have offensive weapons and an offensive military uh, thrust right up against, you know, their back and front and side. And that's what's happening. And that's part of the reason why there is, they got tricked. And a friend of mine told me, he said, Joe, he said, man, he said, uh, they got humiliated. They got pushed up against the wall and, 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 and now they're just reacting uh, to that. I don't justify it, but that's kind of what has happened. Michael. You're the vice president, or Rosanna, president, and and uh, and Anita's the secretary of state, and they've sent you over. You're taking Kamala Harris's place, and they sent you over there to negotiate with uh, Mr. Putin. What are you going to put on the table? Well, I agree. In addition to NATO needing to be dismantled, I think I would talk to Putin about maybe, you know, not dropping bombs on Kiev on these, you know, innocent Ukrainian people. And I would have a conversation with uh, Zelensky, with uh, the president of Ukraine. And I tell him, you know, maybe you need to do something about these fascist militias in your in your military. You know, you're a Jewish guy. You should understand. Right. You know, do a little history lesson. Look what happened. You know, look what happened. Are we going to repeat those mistakes again? 
and uh, maybe work out, you know, a deal with the United Nations and recognizing these countries or not, you know, this is a similar situation to what happened with the, the formation of the republics of Kosovo and, and so forth, but it has to be a peaceful solution, you know, it's not who's going to benefit from this in the long run, you know what I mean, even with the economic implications with get, uh, oil and natural gas, I mean, who's really going to win from this, is, is, it, is it worth a war, you know, and um, I'm thinking back to when Trump and Merkel were in office and they made the deal with uh, for um, natural gas. And since neither of them are in office anymore, um, Olaf uh, Scholz, who's now the new ch uh, chancellor of Germany, and then Biden, you know, that they haven't replaced that deal. And so as a war, I mean, why don't you just replace that deal that you had then instead of having a war with Russia? It doesn't make any sense. First thing we gotta do, cease fire. That's the first thing. Set a time for the cease fire. And then you say, if you cease fire, we'll stop the sanctions. And then the second thing is to pull the troops back. All right, you pull the troops back. I'm going to pull U.S. the U.S. the U.S. troops back out of uh, out of Europe. It has to be that kind of reciprocal kind of action in order for this thing to go forward. And then because we are working class internationalists and we part of a revolutionary government. Of course, if we was working class internationalists, part of a revolutionary government, we wouldn't have no troops up off in there anyway. But okay, we would have to insist that the national question and the autonomy for those two regions be respected. That's the part of the problem. And they got to denazify the Ukrainian army. And they got to they got to disarm the Nazi groups, the militias. They're going around shooting people up, you know, and 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 that has to be a precondition as well. Um, so and then we got you got to bring the UN in. The United Nations has to be brought in uh, to help monitor that that thing because obviously they can't get. You know, I mean, there's too much. And um, so that would be in addition to what my comrades have said, I think should be part of the, uh, part of the, uh, but the bigger issue for us, rather than going around telling people what to do, Rosanna, is to build the peace movement in this country. We gotta put pressure. I don't know what's going on in the Congress. Has the Congress, I know Bernie Sanders has said, it was kind of mixed, but he had a pretty good position on it. I say pretty good, because it wasn't, some things weren't all that, you got into that Russia bashing thing as well. But is the Congress saying anything? Anybody? Is that? Because I, I thought, you know, Barbara Lee is always speaking out. And uh, we don't know. We got to check on that. Nancy Pelosi is likening Putin to Hitler. Oh, my goodness. I understand. I didn't read that firsthand, but. You know, the Russians, the Soviets, would always prefer negotiating with the Republicans than the Democrats, going all the way back, because they felt that the, that the Democrats were always pushing to the right in order to compensate for their domestic program, and that the, and that the Republicans were easier from, because they were, they were always right wing, they were easier to. And I think that's part of the thing that's, working itself out with respect to why the, oh, by the way, did you hear Trump? Trump said, oh, Putin's wonderful. He said a big part of Russia is part of, a uh, big part of the Ukraine is part of Russia. And them tanks are looking good. They're peacekeepers. We should do the same on the southern border. That was, uh, can you imagine? He wants to occupy Mexico, Rosanna. I mean, that's kind of where he's going with that. And uh, I'd like to I'd, I'd, I'd like to go back to what you meant you said about the peace movement here mm. and add that you know what what I don't think people realize is that if we can build a strong peace movement here, we can really make an impact throughout the world. And that's really important to to keep in mind and and it should be the mo biggest motivator for us to to focus our efforts in, um, in here in the United States, because everything that changes here in the United States has an impact throughout the world. So if we can have this impact here, it definitely uh, 
we're definitely making an impact. That's why I agree with you 100%, Rosanna. That's why putting forward these demands and, and what's the basis of unity is really important. Because if you start off, say, oh, this man on NATO, no, that's not, people are not gonna go for that. No, I mean, I'm for that. I'm for it. Don't say, hey, Joe, let's put a motion in the National Committee to defeat him for, because <laughs> he don't support, he's a pro-imperialist, no. But the first demand has to be a ceasefire. I mean, it does. And then, and then the second demand has to be to uh, uh, pull back the troops, get rid of the sanctions. One, two, three. That's the basis upon which we begin to work with people who don't have the advanced politics that, that, that we have. You know what I'm trying to say? So, uh, Anita? Joe, because we uh, are dealing with a country without very advanced politics, there is this partisan political uh, cover to this whole thing um, that I think is preventing Biden from taking just that step of stepping back uh, the sanctions, stepping or offering to step back the troops and set that set back the sanctions. And that is uh, the, the, the political realities that he's going to be dealing with uh, or, or the, the, his party is going to be dealing with in the midterm elections. And McConnell, Mitch McConnell is coming out and saying, well, the reason Putin invaded uh, it was because of Biden's um, weakness. That is, that is their, their new line. Um, as, if, um, as if what's going on, it's always what's going on in the United States is really determines what's going on in the world, apparently. So, um, but, you know, I, I think that might stop Biden from taking those steps that we recognize as really the necessary ones. That's well, that's the, that's, that's, that's the, that's the conventional wisdom. And that's kind of what the Republicans always do. But the question is, and what we have to understand, in my opinion, is that the American people are war weary. Afghanistan occupation, the wars in Iraq, you know, um, people are tired of that stuff. They don't want. And, 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 and that was the basis upon which Trump negotiated that terrible withdrawal plan that Biden executed and got us. So it's not necessarily the case that, in my opinion, that bold action coupled with bold domestic action that the people in the political center wouldn't go for that. And that would kind of build the, the, the issue. The thing that the Biden and them don't understand is that they need a mass movement on the ground to support them. Because if they keep it, uh, Rosanna and Michael and, and Anita confined to debates among the elites. Yeah, you're right, Anita. They're going to do that. But if, if there's a movement on the ground coupled with progressive domestic and international policy, the American people, big section of us, will rally around that. We'll rally around that. And, 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 and that's what's going to either win or lose the midterms. Am I right or wrong? Yeah, I agree with wrong, you. Wrong, Joe. <laughs> I think, didn't, didn't Biden say, at least I thought I heard or read that he said, that he will not send troops and declare war directly? I mean, there's troops through NATO and everything that are in these countries bordering, uh, you know, Ukraine and Russia. But I don't think, I don't think Biden would, you know, enter a war in, in such an important election year. Or they Why the hell send them over there in the first place from Jump Street? Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, why send them in the first place? You know, so there's people that say, don't well, pick up and point it. Don't pick, don't pick up and point a goddamn gun if you don't intend to shoot it. Yeah, because you're sitting up there with your hand on the trigger. Anything could happen. That's right. All right, two domestic policies. <laughs> <clears throat> civil rights charges against those three cops. Chauvin is in jail. Then they tried the three others on civil rights violation. That's a victory, no? 
Very much so. But you know, uh, an even greater victory that I read um, is that about two days ago, Georgia uh, um, made uh, Ahmad Aubrey Day to honor to honor him, and it's a permanent day in in the state of Georgia. That's that's also very historic and really very important. important. And it's not going, and it it doesn't allow for his name to be lost or his the struggle to be lost either. Very important. They're yeah. all results of people pushing. All that work that we did oh, yeah. in the streets, you know, millions of us, you know. And I remember at the time there was debate, you know, are we marching every day? I remember comrades here in New York, the young comrades here, we marched for 34 days straight during it, through the end of uh, mm -hmm. May into early July. And then we started the encampment uh, at City Hall after that. And we would ask each other, you know, is this a waste of time? What's it going to result in? You know, and we defunded uh, the, the, the police budget by a uh, billion dollars here in New York. But, you know, these kind of things, I don't think at the time we thought, you know, two years later, we, we, we would be seeing these victories. And so it just shows you. But the problem is that police kill shootings have, have gone up. More people were killed, shot, shot. I don't know about killed, but more people were shot in 2021 than, than, uh, any year recorded since they started recording, I don't know, seven, eight years ago. So it's gone up. And we're having a forum on Sunday, uh, police violence and the, and, and the need to end it. At eight o'clock, we invite everybody to come. Uh, um, Samira Rice, the mom of uh, uh, Tamir Rice is gonna be there. And Frank Chapman is going to be there from the National Alliance Against Racist and Political Repression. And our own Tim Johnson is going to MC it. He's going to be the moderator. And Molly Negan. And then another woman from uh, who's a wonderful activist from the National Alliance is also going to be present. So check it out. I think we have time for one more question from our listening audience. And, I ba and basically the question is, uh, what does the party do? He said, does the CPUSA consider itself part of a real movement to abolish the existing state of things? That's Marx and Engels. Um, he said, what is the party doing to achieve this end? And how can I contribute? So what does the party do? What are y'all doing to make things happen? I mean, anybody? What are we involved in that this person can become part of? Uh, Joe? Yes. I, I think, I mean, just from my experience in Ohio, we're involved in a lot of things. I think, I think the analysis of, of current events and the discussion of current events and, uh, is, is one part of it, but also going out and educating uh, our, our uh, fellow, our neighbors about what's going on in the world. Um, and organizing and participating in demonstrations and uh, showing what, what our demands are. Um, letter writing campaigns and, and standing in front of Senator Portman's office. We did a lot of that. Um, and I, um, that's among the things, uh, you know. Okay. A lot of things. So you're educating and protesting and writing letters to the editor on different issues, but more specifically, what is the party and why is he doing? Michael, Rosanna, what? What, what 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 do we do? I think there's so many every things. Wednesday or every Saturday or Sunday. What you, there's so many things you can get involved in. I'm thinking of and, and then the reason is why, right? So when we say we campaign for voting rights, right? Oh, voting rights, but that's you know bourgeois democracy. Well, how are you going to organize people for socialism for revolution if you can't even organize them to vote? If you can't even let their voices be heard under this flawed system we have already? And I feel the same way for you know when we protest. Um, the police, uh, you know, the, these police departments and the prison industrial complex, you know, we call for ab abolishing prisons. We know it's not going to happen tomorrow, just like we know the state's not going to be abolished tomorrow, but we fight and we unite people along the way in order to make it happen, you know, and so that's one of my favorite things about the party is how we fight for working class unity on the road to revolution. 
Um, and that's the name of our party program, the Road to Revolution, you know, and Rosanna always says the class struggle is more of a marathon than a sprint. It's not going to happen tomorrow. But these little victories, you know, that we were just talking about, um, these are radicalization processes for many people. And as the capitalist crisis deepens and we struggle for all these things, whether it be voting rights or the struggle against police brutality, the struggle for peace, you know, with everything that's going on in Russia and Ukraine, you know, that builds the party and that builds the movement for democracy and socialism. And so that's what we do. That's what we do every day. Rosanna, you want to add anything? Yeah, I think, you know, I, I think what we do is we participate in the process of the development towards socialism in every way that we can by uh, injecting the, our ideas, our analysis in working class struggles. And it's not an easy thing. It's, it's not an easy thing to do. It's a process. It's a step-by-step -step process that we fully understand and you know we don't have any expectations that we're going to have socialism tomorrow but we do have the expectation that we're building towards it and i think that that's what we uh that's what keeps us going and so uh you know we 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 can have an impact just as as uh michael mentioned about we they didn't know what impact they were going to have at the moment, but we can now, with our analysis, see the impact that it had now, you know, two years later. Same with Occupy. And people didn't, weren't sure about what the impact was, what it was going to have, and we can see the impact it's had. So it's, a, you know, it's a process, and I urge everyone to get involved in their community, in their community uh, concerns, and, and you will see the, the impact that you can have the immediate impact, and you can see the the long uh, trajectory, and you know, the, the what is it the the future impact that you have in the future. In addition to voting rights and education and and uh, all of that, we also do mutual aid, right? I was talking to some comrades in New Orleans. We got a new club in New Orleans. You know, they had five people six months ago. Now they got twenty five people. That's the growth of the party. So they're doing mutual aid. And we do strike support. We do strike support in the Bisco strike. We do strike support in the Kellogg strike. We're doing organizing and uh, along with a whole lot of other folks, unions and community at Amazon, we're doing that. We're fighting in Minneapolis against the uh, shooting of Amir Locke. You know, we do voter registration. We were on a picket line with the Columbia students, right? Anywhere there's a struggle in the city, uh, increasingly, you're going to find Communist Party activists. So write to us at CPUSA at CPUSA.org, and we will get you connected with a local party organization, get you involved, and it'll change your life. It will change your life. Stay strong, stay safe, and stay in the fight. We'll see everybody next week. And don't forget our forum, Sunday evening, 8 o'clock, on ending police violence. Uh, join with us and a number of very fine people, activists, Democrats uh, with a small D. I guess one or two of them are Democrats with a big D, and that's all right, too. Um, and uh, we'll talk to you then. Have a great week, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Stay strong, stay safe, and stay in the fight. <laughs>